As you can see, I'm surrounded by green. Well, I'm not, I'm not surrounded by green, but we are sponsored by the good people at Wash & Go today. The lovely people at Wash & Go. What am I on about good people? And people often say to me, Mark, is it not hard being a Wash & Go ambassador? And I always have to say, reply to them like this. Being a rocket engineer is hard. Just ask Elon Musk. Being Manchester United manager is hard. Just ask the four managers that have taken over since Alex Ferguson. Being an NHS worker, that's hard. Heroes. That, that, that is really hard. But being a shampoo ambassador is as easy as taking a bath. It really is. So next time you're having a really hard day, just run a bath, light some candles, put on some relaxing music and lath lather up with Wash & Go. Classic Wash & Go. You can pick up your bottle at any good retailer or by hitting the link in the description and getting it delivered straight to your door. Thanks very much to Wash & Go for supporting the United Stand. Now let's move on with the show. And remember, Wash & Go, it's invisible. It's bloody, it's invisible, really. Um, so apparently Manchester United are considering offering Paul Pogba £500,000 a week. A huge offer for Paul Pogba, who is expected to be back in training very, very soon. And therefore the pendulum swing of Pogba popularity will um, be in full force again. I think when he's been injured, nobody's really bothered about Pogba, sell him. He'll come back, he'll play well for a couple of games and then people will be saying, give him what he wants. And then he'll start playing inconsistently and then he'll play well. And I suppose, look, I'm a big fan of Paul Pogba. As, as everybody. I'm also a realist about Paul Pogba. And I think, it's, I think it's relevant to talk about what rival clubs are looking to do. And... You know, I thought Coutinho for Villa is a good deal. It's not a good deal for United. I don't think it's. I don't think Coutinho is a good deal for any top four side. But for a team like Aston Villa, Gerrard's played with him. You know, low risk for player and club. It's a good signing. But if Villa go and get Digne and Bissouma, those sort of signings are the sort of signings where I go, hold on a minute, what are we doing? And I, and I do worry about. Well, I think we all do. I do worry about Manchester United's vision because I think spec savers need to help them. I don't believe in the Manchester United vision. Now, I'm more than happy to see what Richard Arnold does as a new CEO. I'm more than happy to see if Ralph Ranić has an influence on Darren Fletcher and uh, John Murta. But the reality is Murta, Fletcher, Arnold have all been part of the Woodward decision-making process over the last year or two years or three years in some cases. So why should we expect a massive change when ultimately Ed Woodward wasn't in charge of the club, the Glazers were? I worry about Manchester United's vision and I definitely think they need an eye test because when a, a, when a player like um, Basuma is being linked to Aston Villa and, and, and Ranić is basically saying he needs a midfielder but he'll probably have to make do with what he's got, I wonder how much longer as a fan base fans are going to be allowing themselves to have the wall pulled over their eyes. I think for years now we've seen other clubs active in the transfer window, as active as we've been, sometimes more active. And we go, well, we're Manchester United. And we do have a very good squad. But that very good squad got smashed by Leicester. It got smashed by Watford. It's a good squad, but they're not Man United players. We need a clear out and we need to bring players in. And when I see other clubs making or making moves to bring people in like Vlahovic at Arsenal as a striker or Isaac, they're looking at him. You look at Spurs, they're looking to bring Adama Traore in and other players. Villa looking to bring two or three players in. Newcastle are starting their journey. And I think... Manchester United are just living off reputation. It's almost like, well, we don't need to do anything because we're Manchester United, which is the big mistake we've made for eight years. Eight years ago, Man City were our, in our shadow. Eight years later, we're very firmly in theirs because we spent eight years going, we're Manchester United. And it's not going to work anymore because the thing about a name is, it's a name. There are plenty of big brands that thought they were big brands and are not big brands anymore. There are plenty of car manufacturers that were epic when I was growing up and don't exist now. And Manchester United are hurtling towards this situation whereby, all right, you're always going to make money as a brand and maybe that's what they want. But as a football club, we're inactive. You can't watch Villa by Bissouma. You can't watch Newcastle by Kamara. You can't watch other clubs in the Premier League by players in positions that you need and go, we're Manchester United. We'll be all right with McTominay and Fred. Like, we've got to start being active. And I don't know whether we have that vision to do that. Um, Ralph, collective and individual, Ranić should do something about Pogba offer. He's a symptom of the disease that Edward is leaving, says Pranav. Well, I want to come back to... Thank you. I, I do quite like to wear a, uh, 
an olive green sort of top and I don't normally get to wear it because of the green screen but this one doesn't actually clash so I quite like it. Um, looking good, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, let's offer an injury prone inconsistent midfielder who goes on about leaving at least once a year, half a million a week. Great idea lad, says Joshua Bowater. No, I was hoping the offer is from another club to buy Pogba. Don't see light at the end of the tunnel, Mark. Pogba is one of those that need to go, says Rick. And Ranjik has recalled Dylan Levitt from a loan at Dundee United. Apparently, do you know why? Says Dan. No, I doubt he's going to have a future at Manchester United, to be honest, in the immediate future. Um, and Mark, can we please not talk about wanting to buy Basuna when he's still on bail until January 27th with possible sexual assault, says Karamu. But look, that's your decision, Karamu. You know, at the end of the day, innocent until proven guilty. Um... And like, I don't know what's going to happen in that case, but he's innocent until proven guilty. And I think United might have an insight into that. United aren't looking at it, are they? Let's be honest. We're happy being blockbuster while the rest of the league become Netflix, Hula and Disney+. Plus. I like that from Gabriel Noel. Bringing it back to Pogba, though. So let's talk about this. Now, look, I'll be honest. The story originates in The Sun. And it's not from Neil Custis. So I don't put a lot of weight on this. But what we do know is is that there is, a, um, there is a contract on the table for Paul Pogba to sign. And we know this from numerous credible outlets, including people like Fabrizio Romano. That is rumoured to be £400,000 a week. Would I mean, look, spade to spade, you know, I want to get into your questions tonight, so I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't offer Pogba this contract. No, I wouldn't. Um, I like Pogba. I really do like Pogba. I'm not one of those people who are like, get out of our club, Pogba, you're inconsistent. You know, some people do it because he's, you know, he's not English, this, that and the other, whatever. I'm not interested in that. I've always liked Pogba. I think he had the attributes to be a lot better than he is. He's one of the few midfielders, centre midfielders in world football that can actually dribble and he doesn't do it enough. Passing range, fantastic. Shooting, fantastic. Physicality. Just didn't really, in a United shirt, fulfil the talent that I thought he was. Um, but on his days, he's unplayable. Um, I really like Paul Pogba. But at 29 years of age and six years of, let's be honest, inconsistency, explain to me the business logic, the football logic, sorry, not the business logic, the football logic of paying a player that's been inconsistent for six years, been, um, I'm trying to think of, the, of a word here that's constructive, um, disruptive in six years because of his agent. And look, it's not people can say it's not Pogba's fault get a new agent then like his agent is disruptive four or five times probably more we've heard he wants to leave over the last six years so he's been disruptive he's been inconsistent and we think that after six years of that and at 29 years of age when he clearly wants to go somewhere else but would only stay if no one else wants him we think it's a good idea to put a four or five year contract on the table for 400 500 grand a week it makes me want to cry. And I like Pogba. But there is absolutely no footballing logic to this. And when you see Arsenal on the rise, Spurs on the rise, Man City becoming stronger, Liverpool consistently good, Chelsea with a massive squad and the ability to keep evolving. And even teams like Aston Villa buying, you know, going for players to make them better. And Newcastle on the rise. Also... Why does it, what's to be excited for United fans if we blow a huge amount of our budget?